Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will discuss the guideline of endometriosis by Ashri, Endometriosis Guideline Development Group 2022. The GDG recommends that clinicians should consider the diagnosis of endometriosis in individuals presenting with these cyclical or non-cyclical signs and symptoms, which include dysmenorrhea, deep dyspareunia, dysuria, dyskasia, painful rectal bleeding or hematuria, shoulder tip pain, catamenial pneumothorax, cyclical cuff, hemoptysis or chest pain, cyclical scar swelling, pain, fatigue and infertility. Although currently no evidence exists that the symptom diary questionnaire or app reduce the time to diagnose or leads to earlier diagnosis, the GTG considers their potential benefit in complementing the traditional history taking process as it aids in objectifying the pain and empowering women to demonstrate their symptoms. Clinical examination including vaginal examination where appropriate should be considered to identify deep nodules or endometrioma in patients with suspected endometriosis although di the diagnostic accuracy is low. In women with suspected endometriosis, further diagnostic steps including imaging should be considered even if clinical examination is normal. Clinicians should not use the measurement of biomarkers in endometrial tissue, blood, menstrual or uterine fluids to diagnose endometriosis. Clinicians are recommended to use the imaging like ultrasound or MRI in the diagnostic workup of endometriosis, but they need to be aware that a negative finding doesn't exclude endometriosis, particularly superficial peritoneal diseases. In the patients with the negative imaging results or where empirical treatment was unsuccessful or inappropriate, the GDG recommends that clinicians consider offering laparoscopy for the diagnosis and treatment of suspected endometriosis. The GDG recommends that diagnostic identification of endometriotic lesion is confirmed by histology although negative histology doesn't entirely rule out the disease. Both diagnostic laparoscopy and imaging combined with empirical treatment that is hormonal contraceptives or progestogen can be considered in the woman suspect of endometriosis. There is no evidence of superiority of either approach and the pros and cons should be discussed with the patient. Follow-up and psychological support should be considered in the woman with a confirmed endometriosis, particularly deep and ovarian endometriosis, although there is currently no evidence of the benefit of the regular long-term monitoring for the early detection of recurrence, complication or malignancy. The appropriate frequency and the type of the follow-up or monitoring is unknown and should be individualized based on the previous and current treatment and the severity of the disease and the symptoms. Although no adequate studies exist to support the benefit of early versus late diagnosis, the GTG recommends that in symptomatic women, attempts should be made to relieve symptoms either by empirical treatment or after a diagnosis of endometriosis. The treatment of endometriosis-associated pain include analgesics. Women may be offered NSAIDs or other analgesics either alone or in combination with other treatment to reduce endometriosis-associated pain. It is recommended to offer women hormonal treatment either combine hormonal contraceptives, progestogen, GnRH antagonist or agonist as one of the options to reduce the endometriosis associated pain. The GTG recommends that clinicians take a shared decision making approach and take individual preferences, side effects, individual efficacy, cost and availability, to cons uh, availability into consideration when choosing hormonal treatment for endometriosis associated pain. It is recommended to prescribe women a uh, combined hormonal contraceptives, either oral vaginal ring or transdermal, to reduce endometriosis associated dyspareunia, dysmenorrhea, or non menstrual pain. Women suffering from endometriosis associated dysmenorrhea can be offered the continuous use of combined hormonal contraceptive pills. It is recommended to prescribe women progestogen to reduce the endometriosis associated pain. The GDG recommends that clinicians take the different side effects profiles of progestogen into account when prescribing them. It is recommended to prescribe women with levonorgestrel intrauterine system or myrena or etonorgestrel releasing subdermal implant to reduce endometriosis associated pain. The GnRH agonist can be prescribed to reduce endometriosis associated pain although evidence is limited regarding the dosage or duration of the treatment. The GDG recommends that GnRH agonists are prescribed as a second line, for example, if hormonal contraceptives or progestogens have been ineffective due to their side effect profile. Clinicians should consider prescribing combined hormonal adbed therapy along with the GnRH agonist therapy to prevent the bone loss and hypoestrogenic symptoms. 
The GnRH antagonist can be prescribed to reduce the endometriosis associated pain although evidence is limited regarding the dosage or duration of the treatment. And the GDG recommends that GnRH antagonists are also prescribed as second line for example if hormonal contraceptives or other treatment prove to be ineffective due to, due to their side effect profile. Uh, in women with endometriosis associated pain refractory to other medical or surgical treatment it is recommended to prescribe aromatase inhibitors as they reduce the endometriosis associated pain. Aromatase inhibitors may be prescribed in combination with oral contraceptives, progestogen, GnRH agonist or antagonist. It is recommended to offer surgery as one of the options to reduce the endometriosis associated pain. When surgery is performed, the clinician may consider excision instead of ablation of the endometriosis to reduce endometriosis associated pain. It can be concluded that Luna is not beneficial as the additional procedure to conventional laparoscopy surgery for the endometriosis as it offers no additional benefit over the surgery alone. The presacral neurectomy is beneficial for the treatment of endometriosis associated midline pain as an adjunct to the conventional laparoscopic surgery but it should be stressed that the PSN requires a high degree of the skill and is associated with increased risk of adverse effects such as intraoperative bleeding and post-operative constipation, urinary urgency and painless first stage of the labor. When performing surgery in patients with ovarian endometrioma, the clinician should perform cystectomy instead of drainage and coagulation and cyst uh, as cystectomy reduces the recurrence of endometrioma and endometriosis associated pain. When performing surgery in women with ovarian endometrioma, clinician can uh, consider both cystectomy and carbon dioxide laser vaporization as both techniques appear to have similar recurrence rates beyond the first year of surgery. Early post-surgical recurrence rates may be lower than cystectomy. When performing surgery for ovarian endometrioma, specific caution should be used to minimize ovarian damage. Clinician can consider performing surgical removal of the deep endometriosis as it may reduce endometriosis associated pain and improve the quality of life. The GDG recommends that women with deep endometriosis are referred to the center of expertise. The GDG recommends that patients undergoing surgery particularly for the deep endometriosis are informed of the uh, informed on the potential risk benefits and the long-term effect on the quality of the life. Due to the heterogeneity of the patient's population, surgical approaches, preferences and the treatments, the GDG decided not to make any conclusions or recommendations on the techniques to be applied for the treatment of the pain associated with deep endometriosis. The clinicians can consider hysterectomy with or without removal of the ovaries with a removal of all visible endometriosis lesions in those women who no longer wish to conceive and fail to respond to the more conservative treatments. Women should be informed that hysterectomy cannot necessarily cure the symptoms or the disease. When a decision is made uh, whether to remove the ovaries, the long-term consequences of early menopause and possible need for the hormone replacement therapy should be considered. The GDG recommends that when hysterectomy is performed, a total hysterectomy is preferred. There is currently no prognostic marker that can be used to select patients that would benefit from the surgery. Such markers would need to be assessed prior to the surgery and pre predict a clinically meaningful improvement of the pain symptoms. Regarding the medical ther therapies as an adjunct to surgery, it is not recommended to prescribe preoperative hormonal treatment to improve the immediate outcome of the surgery for the pain in women with the endometriosis. Women may be offered post-operative hormone therapy to improve the immediate outcome of the surgery for the pain in women with endometriosis if not desiring immediate pregnancy. Regarding uh, the medical versus surgical treatment of endometriosis, the GDG recommends that clinicians take a shared decision-making approach and individual preferences, side effects and individual cost and availability into consideration when choosing between the hormone treatment and surgical treatment for endometriosis-associated pain. Regarding the non-medical management strategies, the GDG recommends that clinicians discuss the non-medical strategies to address the quality of the life and psychological well-being um, in managing the symptoms of endometriosis. However, no recommendations can be made for any specific non-medical intervention. In infertile women with endometriosis, clinicians should not prescribe the ovarian suppression treatment to improve the quality, imp to improve the fertility. Women seeking pregnancy should not be prescribed post-operative hormone suppression with a sole purpose of sole purpose to enhance the future pregnancy rates. Those women who cannot attempt or decide 
not to conceive immediately after the surgery may be offered hormone therapy as it doesn't negatively impact their fertility and improve the immediate outcome of the surgery for the pain. In infertile women with endometriosis, clinicians should not prescribe pentoxyphylline, other anti-inflammatory drugs or letrozole outside the ovulation induction to improve the natural pregnancy rates. Operative laparoscopy should be uh, could be offered as treatment option for endometriosis associated uh, infertility in ASRM stage one or two endometriosis as it improves the rate of ongoing pregnancy. Clinician may consider operative laparoscopy for the treatment of endometrioma associated infertility as it may increase the chance of the natural pregnancy, although no data from the comparative studies exist. Although no compelling evidence exists that the operative laparoscopy for the deep endometriosis improves fertility, operative laparoscopy may um, represent a treatment option in symptomatic patients wishing to conceive. The GTG recommends that the decision to perform the surgery should be guided by the presence or absence of the pain symptoms, the patient age and the preferences, history of the previous surgery, the presence of other uh, infertility factors, ovarian reserves and the estimated endometriosis fertility index or EFI. Women should be consulted of their chances of becoming pregnant after surgery to identify patients that may benefit from ART after the surgery. The endometriosis fertility index should be used as it is validated. The results of other fertility investigation should be could be take into, taken into account. Regarding the medically assisted reproduction, the guidelines says that in infertile women with ASRM stage 1 and 2 endometriosis, clinician may perform IUI with ovarian stimulation instead of expected management or IUI alone as it increases the pregnancy rates. Although the value of IUI in infertile women with ASRM stage 3 and 4 endometriosis with tubal patency is uncertain, the use of IUI with ovarian stimulation could be considered. ART can be performed for infertile, infertility associated with endometriosis, especially if tubal function is compromised, if there is male factor infertility in case of the low EFI or if other treatments have failed. A specific protocol for the ART in women with endometriosis cannot be recommended. Both GNRH antagonist and agonist protocols can be offered based on the patient's and the physician's preferences as no difference in the pregnancy or the life birth rates have been demonstrated. Women with endometriosis can be reassured regarding the safety of the ART since the recurrence rates are not increased compared with those women not undergoing ART. In women with endometrioma, clinician may use the antibiotic prophylaxis at the time of the oocyte retrieval, although the risk of the ovarian abscess formation following the follicle aspiration is low. The extended administration of the GnRH agonist prior to the ART treatment to improve the live birth rate in infertile women with endometriosis is not recommended as the benefit is uncertain. There is insufficient evidence to recommend the prolonged administration of combined oral contraceptive or progestogen as the pre-treatment to ART to increase the life birth rates. So, clinicians are not recommended to routinely perform surgery prior to ART to improve the life birth rates in women with ASRM stage 1 and 2 endometriosis as the potential benefits are unclear. Clinicians are not recommended to routinely perform surgery for ovarian endometriomas prior to ART to improve the life birth rates. As the current evidence show no benefit and the surgery is likely to have a negative impact on the ovarian reserve. Surgery for the endometrioma prior to ART can be considered to improve the endometriosis-associated pain or accessibility of the follicles. The decision to offer surgical excision of the deep endometriosis lesion prior to ART should be guided mainly by the pain symptoms and the patient preferences as its effectiveness on the reproductive outcome is uncertain due to the lack of the randomized studies. Now, regarding the non-medical strategies on infertility, there is no clear evidence that any non-medical intervention for women with endometriosis will be of benefit to increase the chance of pregnancy. No recommendations can be made to support any non-medical intervention to increase the fertility in women with endometriosis. Those non-medical treatments may include the nutrition, the Chinese medicine, the electrotherapy, acupuncture, physiotherapy, exercise and psychological interventions, but the potential benefits and harms are unclear. Now, in case of extensive ovarian endometriosis, the clinician should discuss the pros and cons of fertility preservation with a woman with endometriosis. The true benefit of fertility preservation in women with endometriosis remains unknown.
Regarding the impact of endometriosis on pregnancy and pregnancy outcome, the guideline says that patients should not be advised to become pregnant with the sole purpose of treating endometriosis as pregnancy doesn't always lead to improvement of the symptoms or reduction of the disease progression. Endometriosis may change in appearance during pregnancy. In case of finding an atypical endometrioma during ultrasound in pregnancy, it is recommended to refer the patient to center with appropriate expertise. Complications related directly to the pre-existing endometriosis lesions are rare but probably underreported. Such complications may be related to decidualizations, adhesion formation, stretching and endometriosis related chronic inflammation. Although rare, they may represent the life-threatening situation that may require the surgical management. Clinicians should be aware that there may be an increased risk of the first trimester miscarriage and the ectopic pregnancy in women with endometriosis. Clinicians should be aware of the endometriosis-associated complications in pregnancy, although these are rare. As these findings are based on the low-moderate quality studies, these results should be interpreted with a caution and currently do not warrant increased antenatal monitoring or deciduate the woman from becoming pregnant. Now, recurrence of the endometriosis is a real challenge for both the patients and the clinicians. Uh, clinicians should consider prescribing the post-operative use of levonorgestrel intrauterine system or myrena or combined hormonal contraceptive for at least 18 to 24 months for secondary prevention of the endometriosis-associated dysmenuria. After surgical management of ovarian endometrioma in women not immediately seeking conceptions, clinicians are recommended to offer the long-term hormonal treatment for the secondary prevention of endometrioma and endometriosis-related pain uh, symptoms recurrence. For the prevention of the recurrence of the deep endometriosis and associated symptoms, long-term administration of the post-operative hormonal treatment can be considered. Clinicians can perform ART in the woman with the deep endometriosis as it doesn't seem to increase the endometriosis recurrence per se. Now, for the treatment of the recurrence of the endometriosis, any hormonal treatment of the surgery can be offered to uh, treat the recurring uh, pain symptoms in women with the endometriosis. Regarding endometriosis and adolescence, the guideline states that in adolescence, the clinicians should take a careful history to identify the possible risk factors for endometriosis such as positive family history, obstructive uh, genital malformations, early menarche, or the short menstrual cycle. Clinicians may consider endometriosis in the young woman presenting with cyclical abstinence from the school or with the use of oral contraceptives for the treatment of dysmenorrhea. In adolescents, the clinician should take a careful history and consider these symptoms suggestive of the presence of endometriosis. Those include the chronic or acyclical uh, pelvic pain, particularly combined with the nausea, dysmenorrhea, dyskesia, dysuria, and dysmenorrhea, or they may present with the cyclical pelvic pain. In the absence of the evidence for the adolescents, specifically, the recommendations for the clinical examination in adults can be applied. The GDG recommends that before performing vaginal examination and or rectal examination in adolescents, the acceptability should be discussed with adolescents and their caregiver, taking into consideration the patient's age and cultural background. Now, the transvaginal ultrasound is recommended to be used in adolescents in whom it is appropriate as it is effective in diagnosing ovarian endometriosis. If the transvaginal scan is not appropriate, MRI, transabdominal, transperineal or transrectal scan can be considered. Serum biomarkers, for example, CA125, are not recommended for diagnosing or ruling out the endometriosis in adolescents. In adolescents with suspected endometriosis, where imaging is negative and the medical treatment have not uh, been successful, diagnostic laparoscopy may be considered. And if the laparoscopy is performed, clinicians should consider taking biopsies to confirm the diagnosis uh, histologically, although the negative histology doesn't entirely rule out the disease. Now, in uh, adolescents uh, with a severe dysmenorrhea or endometriosis associated pain, clinicians should prescribe the hormonal contraceptives of progesterone systematically or uh, via levonorgestrel intrauterine system as the first line hormonal therapy because they may be effective and safe. The GTG recommends that clinicians consider NSAID as treatment for the endometriosis associated pain in adolescents with suspected endometriosis, specifically if the first line hormonal treatment is not an option. In adolescents with laparoscopically confirmed endometriosis and associated pain, in whom the hormonal contraceptives or progesterone therapy fail, clinicians may consider prescribing GnRH agonist for up to one year as they are effective and safe when combined with the ADPAC therapy.
The GDG recommends that in young women and adolescents, if GnRH agonist treatment is considered, it should be used only after the careful consideration and discussion of the potential side effects and the potential long-term health risk with the practitioners in the secondary or tertiary care setting. In adolescents with the endometriosis, the clinician may consider the surgical removal of endometriosis lesions to manage the endometriosis-related symptoms. However, the symptom recurrence rates may be considered especially when the surgery is not followed by the hormone treatment. The GDG recommends that if surgical treatment is indicated in adolescents with endometriosis, it should be performed laparoscopically by an experienced surgeon and if possible, complete laparoscopic removal of all present endometrioma should be performed. In adolescent with the endometriosis, clinician should consider the post-operative hormone therapy as this may suppress the recurrence of the symptoms. Regarding the fertility preservation, the GDG recommends that adolescents with endometriosis are informed of the potential detrimental effect of the endometri uh, ovarian endometriosis and surgery on the ovarian reserve and future fertility. Fertility preservation options exist and the GDG recommends that adolescents are informed about them, although the true benefits, safety and indications in adolescents with endometriosis remain unknown. Regarding endometriosis and menopause, the guideline says that clinicians should be aware that endometriosis can still be active or symptomatic after menopause. Clinician may consider surgical treatment for the postmenopausal woman presenting with the signs of the endometriosis and or pain to enable histological confirmation of the diagnosis of endometriosis. The GDG recommends that clinician acknowledge the uncertainty towards the risk of malignancy in postmenopausal women. For postmenopausal uh, women with endometriosis associated pain, clinician may consider aromatase uh, inhibitors as a treatment option especially if the surgery is not feasible. Menopausal um, symptoms in women with the history of the endometriosis regarding that the guideline says that clinician may consider con combined menopausal hormone therapy for the treatment of uh, postmenopausal symptoms. Clinician should avoid prescribing the estrogen only regimen for the treatment of vasomotor symptoms in postmenopausal women with a history of endometriosis as these regimens may be associated with a higher risk of the malignant transformation. The GDG recommends that clinician continue to treat women with a history of endometriosis of the surgery, surgical menopause with the uh, combined uh, estrogen progesterone as um, at least up to the age of the natural menopause. Regarding the menopause related major health concerns in women with endometriosis, the guideline says that clinicians should be aware that women with endometriosis should have undergone an early bilateral sulping ovophoractomy as a part of their treatment, have an increased risk of the diminished bone um, density dementia and cardiovascular disease. Clinicians should be aware of the symptoms of extra pelvic endometriosis such as the cyclical shoulder pain, cyclical spontaneous pneumothorax and cyclical cuff or nodules which enlarge during menses. It is advisable to discuss the diagnosis and management of the extra pelvic endometriosis in multidisciplinary team in the center with the sufficient expertise. For abdominal extra pelvic endometriosis, the surgical removal is preferred treatment when possible to relieve the symptoms. For thoracic endometriosis, hormone treatment can be offered. Regarding the asymptomatic endometriosis, the guideline says that clinicians should not prescribe the medical treatment in women with incidental finding of endometriosis. And also, surgical treatment should not be performed in asymptomatic endometriosis. Routine ultrasound monitoring of the asymptomatic endometriosis can be considered. Clinician should inform women with endometriosis requesting information on their risk of developing a cancer that endometriosis is not associated with significantly higher risk of the cancer overall. The GDG recommends that clinician reassure women with endometriosis with regard to their cancer risk and address their concerns to reduce their risk by recommending general cancer preventing measures. Now, based on the limited literature and controversial findings, there is little evidence that somatic mutations in patients with a deep endometriosis may be predictive of development and or pro progression of the ovarian cancer. Clinicians should reassure women with endometriosis about the risk of the malignancy associated with the use of hormonal contraceptives. Clinicians should not systematically perform the cancer screening beyond the existing population-based cancer screening guideline. Cancer screening can be performed in those with additional risk factors like strong family history, specific germline mutations. Now, the complete exceed of the visible endometriosis may reduce the risk of the ovarian cancer. So, thank you so much. That was all about the ASHRAE endometriosis guideline. Subscribe on Ops and Gynae. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.